What is up guys, Luke Callahan of the Disc Golf Kid here. We are at the USDGC with Paige Pierce, five-time world Hello. champ, and I'm sure multiple US women's champ. Yep. Okay, so we're gonna, she's gonna give some quick little tips on how to get distance because I get asked a lot how I get distance for my smaller size and I don't exactly know how to answer that yet. So Paige is gonna give you some tips on how you can get more distance and throw the disc way farther for a smaller build. Yeah, so when I first started doing clinics, I kind of have a similar experience. I, I didn't exactly know how to describe what I was doing. And so it's people like you guys who keep asking the questions that help us learn what we're even doing. So um, something that people like you asking these questions taught me to break my form down a little bit more. And what I realized that I was doing was pushing off my back leg a lot. So if you're a right-handed player, when you leave the course at the end of the day, the most overworked muscle should be your left leg. This hamstring right here is producing so much power into my shots that I never really understood until I started breaking it down. So a lot of people, their timing is a little bit off. So they're using almost only their arm. And when you're throwing the disc with this one little muscle, it's hard to get it to go 600 feet. But if your timing's correct and your hamstring's pushing off at the same time you're snapping the disc, you're getting all of your body as one big muscle. So it's easier to make the disc go farther. So I would say to try to have your friend video you, mm -hmm. put it in slow-mo and watch the timing. Make sure that your lower body is coming through at the same time as your upper body right here instead of like this. If it's all together, it's one giant muscle. So just slow it down and try to repeat that over and over. Thank you, Paige. All right. Yeah. All right, so what is like the main thing that I'm doing wrong? That you On notice? that particular shot. So also this is another thing. When you're filming yourself, film yourself 10 times and don't think about the very first time because you might be nervous the camera's on you might have just done something different than you normally do so watch 10 slow-mo videos of yourself and see what was the most common error so mm -hmm. based off that one shot okay. i would say that your timing is impeccable you're really you. your timing is really good but when you did the transfer of the weight from back here to up here you didn't emphasize it okay so you know like the last second how you just went pop it right you also want to emphasize that transfer over so okay. like if you've seen the disc golf strong at all mm -hmm. where he's like really right. trying to get us to go fast and kevin jones is like the best at it ever he's pushing off here like a cannon and like a really fast and so like pop that first part of your your uh, push off as well as the last second of your wrist okay. does you. that make sense yeah cool all right, so do you want to throw some, or do you sure. want me to throw more? Either works. I'll throw. That's right. Good shot. <laughs> so you heard that last part, right? Right. So that's in your brain. Forget about that now okay. because it's going to like consume you, right? Okay. You're going to think about it on every time, and now the next... 60 shots you throw, you're gonna shank everywhere. Got it. Because you gotta get worse to get better. And so when you're changing these things, your timing's gonna feel worse until it feels good. Okay. And all of a sudden you're gonna hit this one shot and it's gonna feel perfect and you're gonna be like, I gotta do that again. Right. And then that's why field work is so important mm -hmm. because you can just have a hundred shots and when you get that 60th one perfect, you're gonna be like, oh, keep going, keep going, mm -hmm. keep going. Because when you're in a tournament, you can't right. throw again. Exactly. You know what I mean? So just keep doing that over and over. Okay. And when you when you're first trying to implement this new step into your into your run up, mm -hmm. a lot of people overdo it and they're really trying to push off of here and then they go up. So don't think about that. Think about so say my target that dark patch right there. Yep. I'm thinking about my right foot, my right hip, and my right elbow all going forward at that. Okay. So if I'm not thinking about that, sometimes what happens is my hip comes up and so does my elbow. 
If my hip comes up, so does my elbow, and then it's nose up. Okay. And you see a lot right. of nose up shots that yeah. they're almost good, but they just only go 200 feet. Right. You know? Okay. So think about going forward. Yes. Yep. Okay. Think about your hip hitting the basket. Okay. Nice. See like how direct it is? Yeah. It didn't go up in the air at all, but it also was in a nose, like, a, what do they call right. them? Nose down. Worm burners. Right. <laughs> yeah. It just went forward. So that's like the key objective because any angle that you show, it loses speed okay. and distance. So if you can get it as flat as possible, that's that's what you're looking for. Thank you. Thank you guys for watching this video, and thank you, Paige, for coming out and doing this video with us. It sure helped me a lot, and I hope it helped you guys. So thank you again for coming out. And if you like this video, make sure to subscribe, leave a like on the video, comment, and I'll see you in the next one.